Good morning, Renovation. Good morning, family. I know we're doing good, right? Because God is good, right? And if God is on the throne, we got everything we need. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and worship. this morning? Who did you come to receive something? I didn't know y'all were going to answer me back. That's awesome. <laughs> so we have, we have talk back church this morning. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I want you to think who you came to worship. Why you came. Why you decided to walk through those doors today. Ask yourself that. Why do you decide to walk through those doors today? I'm telling you God's got something for you. He always comes prepared. He always comes prepared, ready to lay it on you, ready to give it to you. What you need, he has got, amen? Some of you need to look at yourself, you need to pull out a compact, borrow your wife's compact, look at yourself and say, you know what? God has something for me today, and I'm going to receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen? We serve a good God. Who's excited to worship him today? I'm telling you, I am speaking out right now that there are chains right now breaking off. Let's just praise him before we begin in this next song. If you can lift up your hands and just, I want you to just 
surrender yourself to him this morning. Something that, just, just step out bolder. If we can just lift up our hands. Thank you. You can go ahead and continue to play. God, we thank you so much for this service. We thank you so much. What an honor it is to be in the house of the Lord freely where we can praise your name, God. Where we can pour out ourselves to you, God. Where you can pour into us, God. Where we don't have to be ashamed of who we are, Father. We can come as we are to you, God. Lord, we thank you that if there's anything that is attached to us this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, those chains are broken off. Because all we want is an encounter with you. All we want is to be in your presence, God. Life-changing love of God. I'll just let him minister to you. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. So we feel it. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
say you are Jesus. Yes, we do. Yes, we believe you're the God who you say you are Jesus. Yes. Oh, we feel it sitting. There's an army. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, there's an army rising up to break every chain, break every drink from, oh, he is my soul, and let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is mine. Let's sing that again. And let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain drink from, oh, he is my soul, and let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my soul, 
Cause you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, yes you are good, you're good Jesus, oh, you are good, you're good. Sing it out. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, we sing to you. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. I know. Cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, it's songs are You're never gonna let
that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of lies where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your some praise. God, we praise you. We worship you, Jesus. God, we thank you so much for all you've done, God, for all you're doing, God, for all you've yet to do, God, that you have planned, Father. Amen. Woo, we serve a good God, don't we? Oh, hallelujah. We serve a promise keeper. Amen. We serve a promise keeper. Woo. Did you receive something from worship today? Did you see something from the Lord? That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a few minutes um, to fellowship. Uh, just walk around the room, introduce yourself. If this is your first time, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming to Renovation. We do have a saying here. Five seconds after you come through this door, you are what? You are officially family. I'm sorry if you don't like your in-laws. I hope you do. 
because we're pretty cool. Um, we're going to fellowship a little bit, and then we'll get into the announcements. Good. It's so good to see you. Um, if it is your first time here, we just want to say welcome to the family. We do have what we call connect cards that are in the back of the chairs in front of you. If you would, fill that out if it's your first time. And if you'll take it to the information desk outside the sanctuary, we do have something special that we would like to give you. So if you would please do that. Um, really quick, I'm going to go over the ways in which we can give, and then we're going to take up the offering. And so you can give by cash or check, and there are giving envelopes in the back of the chairs as well. So you can, um, so we have record of your giving, or you can give online at renovationrome.com, or you can text to give, which is super easy. You just text the amount that you want to give to the number on the screen, and then it'll ask for your information the first time, and after that it's saved. So it's super easy. Um, let us go to the Lord in prayer as the ushers come forward. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to worship you in another way and to worship you in our giving. And so, Father, as we give, I ask that you bless those that are able to give and those that are not. And, Father, we just ask that all of these finances, Lord, be multiplied and blessed, that it may go out and further your kingdom everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So in the way of announcements, um, most of you know we are doing the Jesus fast. We're in that for 40 days. And we're going to finish it out together with a small time fast. And so um, as a celebration starting on um, April 5th, which is Friday, um, from 6.30 to 7.30. So from Friday through Tuesday night, we are going to meet together for just an hour for prayer and worship and praise and just celebrate the King together and end the fast together as a family. So please, if you can, come out and be a part of that. Home groups. So... <laughs> As you know, we like to keep things shaken up around here. And so starting on May 1st, our Wednesday nights are going to go back to doing home groups on Wednesday nights instead of having the adults in here. And so um, the young adults will be here and the youth will still meet here. Um, and we're going to have more information and more details for you on the 17th. And so um, we're going to have like a home group fellowship 
And so what we want is we're going to have a fellowship, and I'll have more details for you guys next week, but we're going to have food, and we're going to talk about um, home groups, our plan, our vision for it. And if you're not in a home group, we want to get you connected. And if any of you are interested in being a home group leader, which just means hosting from your home and leading a group, um, we need some more leaders. So if you would like to do that, you can see Charlotte or Matthew Espy for that. Um, but we're really, you know, we really want to encourage home groups. It's what we have always stood on. It's the one way that we can continue to have that family culture that all of us experience here. And so just put that on your calendar that starting May 1st, um, we'll be starting on Wednesdays. But on the 17th will be our last Wednesday night here, and we'll talk more in details about home groups then. Um, for the Daughters of Destiny, which is our women's ministry, we are going to have T-shirts for sale um, for $15. If you want one, if you would please see my mom, Kim, and she will um, get your payment and put you down for a pre-order, and we'll get those out to you soon. And then lastly is Growth Track, which is a tool that we use to get everybody connected into the church. Um, it's good for somebody that's new to this church or new to, to the Lord. And so it goes over discipleship, and then we also go over the church, who we are, what we believe, how we operate, our story. And um, I think that's really important coming in. I know a lot of you have been here for a little while, and it's just important that we want you to be on the same page with us. We want you to know our vision and our heart and what has gotten us here and what God is doing. And so if you would please, like, if you have any questions about that, you can come see me, and that's on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. So I'm going to pray as he comes forward and gives us the word. Dear Lord, we just thank you that we can come into your house this morning, Father. And I ask that you open up our hearts to receive the word today and that we can hear you clearly, Father, and that it not only just hits our heart, Lord, but that we go out and we walk it out. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You must be at a funeral. Somebody say amen. Every time that we come in, we're to come in not expecting to get, but to give. We come in because God has called us in to be a body, an army that is being raised up. And man, this whole time I'm sitting here and I'm listening and I'm going, and I'm like, man, I just, I want to just shout. I just want to run. There's so much inside me that wants to go out, and I can tell I'm feeling better. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are thinking, oh, no, he's coming back again. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I am so, 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 can I say so? So excited. And I want you to know that today God wants to set your feet, not on just solid rock, but he wants to slap you and put you right down in the middle where the pit of hell is so that you can grab some people out and pull them up because that's what it's about. If all we're going to do is just come to the Lord and sit there and say, this is good, make it fit us, we're missing the whole part of what Christianity is about, the whole sacrifice of Jesus. He came, and we know this, so that he could live through us. His life now inside of us, running through, and they're without limits. The only thing that limits the Lord in your life is you. That's it. Absolutely it. He's put you in every place and everywhere you go, live, work, and play, so that you could change the world. You. Yeah, you. As goofy as you look and as... Is, is old or young as you are is maybe a little bit more than some. You know, I'm looking at this, thinking this myself sometimes. Like, help me, Jesus. Can't even breathe. I'm at this point now where you go down and put your shoes on. I like those that slip on now. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Yeah. Hence why we're going to the shoes of the, the preparation of the gospel of somebody say peace. peace. Now, if we, and, and this might throw some of you off, and I understand. I know we're a little bit we're light today, but that's okay. If we understand why the sacrifice and Jesus said it was finished and why he's given us his spirit, why he covered in us in his blood, why he's given us inheritance, which we can't even start to understand right now, why he formed us before the foundation of the world and written down every one of our days, and yet there was not one. If we could understand why that was and why that we are supposed to be the finished work of Christ. Did you ever think about that? No, brother, that's kind of like, yeah, you're a heretic. Well, I might be, but i got to tell you something. Scripture says that we become that part. Scripture says we become the finished work of Christ. This is why he died, so that he could live through us. If the spirit that raised him from the dead, that took all of those things, is now sitting inside of us, not around us, but in us, we have power. Somebody say power. power. Now, let's do it again. Power. Man, you guys are almost there. You're either sick or something. 
Do it one more time. See, now that's what happens. You speak with power. You speak with a a force of your spirit that lets everything know that you're not going to be a pansy. You're not going to be somebody that's going to be thrown here and there. You're going to rise to another level because God has ordained you for this time in which you live in. He's ordained you. Yeah, but brother, you don't know the stuff I went through. I don't need to. He does. He let you go through that for the perfecting of you so that you could walk in the image in the likeness of Jesus Christ, which was your original design. But you're allowing your circumstances, you're allowing the urgencies and emergencies to dictate where you're at. You don't like where he's put you. Everybody wants these comfortable shoes. We like that, don't we? A padded cross, maybe a little bit that we could just wear around our neck. That's good. We don't want to go too far. God's not called you to do that. He's called you to go deep into who he is. Now, I've got a celebration that I just want to talk about real quick that we just had just just a couple days ago. That bill, the HB bill that we actually saw, that went from 481, that we saw pass, went to the house, and it passed again by one vote. Isn't that not awesome? That one vote be in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now, now here's what I'm going to say. I'm just, I just want to put it out there. I think, for me, that that deserves us standing to our feet and giving God some glory because now we've, we, we're going to see lives changed because of this. So let's stand. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, Lord. We praise you in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give honor to whom honor is due. And it is due. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Man, it is so good. I'm like really pumped up. I really am. I can't wait to really get into this. I want us to go to a a, uh, passage, if you will. So turn to Isaiah. And we're going to hit chapter 42. <laughs> yeah. And I want to I want us just to touch verse 16 on this one. When you're there, I want to hear amen. 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 I will lead the blind by a way they do not know. In the past they do not know, I will guide them. I will make darkness into light before them and rugged places into plains. These are the things I will do, and I will not leave them undone. Man, God wants to lead and guide us, direct us into things which we haven't even seen. And we have to step up. But sometimes stepping up and stepping out causes a friction with people in our life. It causes us to actually start to do a little fleshly friction because it doesn't look comfortable. It doesn't look like it should in our eyes or in our mind. But yet, who has known the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we can have the mind of Christ, as Paul writes to the Corinthian church, so that we could step out. It's not all about prophesying, or should I say prophelying. It's not all about laying hands and flopping like a fish out of water. It's all about walking straight into him with the power given to us so that we could see darkness flee. There's a time in our life, and I truthfully believe, where we're seeing this in this generation. And and what I'm so excited about with this bill passing, which I'm really, 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 really excited about, because if we would follow history, we would see that the enemies tried to destroy this mankind all the way back from the beginning. And every time that he would release such a, a huge attack on our unborn, on the unborn itself, on, on, on the young ones, it's because that generation is going to destroy the works of hell like it's never seen. And this is what we have to understand. We do. We have to understand that there is power. And the only way that we get that is by submitting to Jesus. And then he gives us his spirit. Then we could walk in things. We could see hearts healed. We could see the dead rise. We could see the leper cleansed. Man, it's just all with wind. What we get from the beaten and the bloody base of the cross. Well, warfare is our way of life. Just got done telling Philip this. Warfare is our way of life. We- the weapon that we use is love, and the ammunition for that weapon is the blood of Jesus. He's called us into battle, each and every one of us. If anybody would ever come into this faith, into Christianity, and think it's not going to be a battle, you've been deceived. Because it's going to be. You're called to be this. But as every good soldier, we follow the general. And we have a general that's never lost. Never. We're fighting with an army that will never, ever be defeated. That has never even come close to it. 
because God is the center and the foremost of everything somebody say we do. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want us to, to go and just hit a couple of these passages for our foundation. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Somebody got some heartache in this house today. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 3. I'm going to read from the New King James Version of this one. For though I walk in the flesh, I don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience once your obedience is fulfilled or complete. This is part of what we're talking about putting the shoes on. God wants to do this, but we have to walk in the past in which he's called us. And as he calls us, we're going to be able to start to see, as we, we saw last week, with building up the fortress. We're either building a fortress up, a safe place for the enemy to fight with us, or we're building up a fortress for the Lord for us to be in a safe place from the enemy. And we have, last week, we started tearing down those walls where it was a, was a good place for the enemy to fight us, and we had no idea. And now we're going to start to build. We're going to start to build. And as we build this high castle, I want you to picture a tower that's way up high. So high up in the air, man, you can't hardly even see the ground. You don't hear anything. This is where you're at with the Lord. You're in these chambers with God in a safe place where the enemy's arrows can't even get to. It's a place in a mountain that gets so high where the snakes can't even go. I call it above the snake line. And God puts us there when we're in mind of who we are in him and who he is in us. Because we're seated in heavenly places. Somebody say heavenly places. With him. And this is where he wants us. To, this is where he desires for us to be. And every step, every part of your schedule is dictated by what God God wants to do so when in your job, I don't like my job. God's got you there for a reason. Oh, I'm, I don't like these people that I'm around. There. I'm just tired of hearing this cussing and all this. God's got you there for a reason. He wants to break the chains of what these people, most people don't even realize they're there. Well, you don't know how manipulative they are. You don't know. Maybe God's got you there so that you could break that manipulation. Maybe you could come in and they could see you hanging on the cross. And as they see you hanging on the cross, they start to see Jesus through you. Because, yes, he says, no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for others. As I've done, do unto others. You know what that is? That's not just to go about and say, hell, you're so lovely, you're so great, but it's absolutely to die for one another. That's a part of which we have to get to. This, for me, for me, this is the greatest of all things, is that I die and he lives. I need to go back with John the Baptist. When John said, I must decrease and he must increase, but now I need to flip this. This was before the Spirit of the Lord was coming, before Jesus was formed in us. And I need to say this, you need to increase today. You need to increase in a way that brings holiness everywhere you go. You should walk into a room and darkness needs to flee. You should hear the demons echoing and running out before you even get there. The, he, the, the sick should be raised off their deathbeds. We should see marriages that are falling apart suddenly come together. We should see addictions falling like this because of the presence of who we are. I believe that God so wants to manifest his spirit inside of us as children of the highest one that we will see physically see these things of the spirit realm happen. I truthfully believe that we will see fire within our hands. We will see them within the eyes because we're walking that deep into who he is. Deep. Don't let this mind start to stop you of what you've been taught, what you've been raised up. You can't do this. It doesn't happen that way. That's what's stopping the move of the Lord. You are being redoed. You're, you're being, being detoxed and redone, and you're, you're starting to be formed into an image of who you were supposed to be from the very beginning. God created you to have dominion, to have power, to multiply, to cultivate, to protect. God created you to lift up. He created you in the essence of who Jesus Jesus is. This is why Jesus came back to restore us. This is why we need to be really, and I'm going to use this, hostile to darkness. We can't just go, oh, we just padded a little bit. It's not doing any good. 
We need to be violent. And this is where John the Baptist was talking about. And the violent take it by force. You are ambassadors of the kingdom. You are called to get deep into that. And Paul doesn't just leave us alone. He gives us good things with us. So let's go to our next one, which is in Ephesians chapter 6. Starting at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full arm of God that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of the darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full arm of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of gospel of peace, and in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith in which you'll be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Gosh, that's good. How many of you feel like you just got burnt by an arrow? Anybody? Anybody feel like they, they, you just got burnt, man? The enemy just sought you somewhere, and just, man, you still got that scar of a burn? That's me, Pastor. I just don't want to say so. That's all right. We all go through it every week, every day. There's arrows being flung at you every day. But God says, get up and put this armor on, which is putting Jesus on. And we could stop those arrows. We can. We could stop them from doing the damage of what they're going to do. The other part of this, this isn't just for us. But it's for those ones beside us that don't know about it or doesn't have the faith to lift it up or that can't. They're too weak. Guys, this is what it's about. Dying for one another, taking that shield and covering somebody else so that they don't get hit. Because, man, there's a whole lot of junk going on. Everybody this, everybody that, this, that, the other. I mean, even in the church realm. In the church realm today, this church putting down that one, this church putting down this one, this church, it, 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 I'm doing it better, you're doing it. You can't get the voice of the Lord there. you got to get it for me. Gosh, are we not understanding what the enemy's already working? He doesn't care what side you're on as long as you can call damage to one another. That's what it's about with him. He wants to cause damage to one another, but not God. God says, I come to restore and bring life into what looks like it's dead. This is why we come together. They will know that we are Christians by our love. Anybody ever heard that song? They will know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. Some of you are looking like, man, I don't know what he was smoking. Yeah, it's good. How much love do you have? How Are you willing to grab a hold of the other? That's where these feet come in. That's a part of what we're supposed to with all of this. Well, let's just keep going. Some of you are looking at me kind of crazy. All right, here we go. And then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. With this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all saints. And pray on my behalf. Somebody say my behalf. <laughs> that utterance may be given to me. Somebody say me. That's what we have to do. Lord, give me this utterance. Give me this power. Give me this that I could walk through. Because this is the next part right here. In the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Last week we just touched on him, but we closed the touching of the breastplate of righteousness. And we actually saw Adam Clark's, how he put that in the commentary, which I thought was really good. It says, as the breastplate defends the heart, the lungs, and all those vital functionaries that are contained in what's called the region of the thorax. So this righteousness defends everything on which a man's spiritual existence, spiritual existence, commends. we got to have it all. We got to have this breastplate of righteousness. It's got to cover us because, as we saw in Romans chapter 15, verse 7, that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. The voice version of that puts it this way He orchestrated this. The anointed one who had exper never experienced sin became sin for us so that in him we might embody the very righteousness of God. That's pretty good, isn't it? So it's not like Jesus just said, okay, listen, I'm going to put your sin on, so I'm going to drape it on me. He became your sin. Let that hit you for a second. 
He became your lying, your cussing, your cheating, your dick. He became all of that, every bit of it. He became it. So that you would not put just righteousness on, but you would become righteousness of God. It's a different mindset, isn't it? Well, righteousness is just about me. i got to put it on like a robe. No, it's who you are. See, when we put on the belt of truth, you're not just saying this is a piece of item that I'm putting on. You're saying I become truth. When you put on the breastplate of righteousness, you're not just saying, listen, I'm going to put this on so God's righteousness covers me. You're saying, I become righteous. You're not just putting on the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace just so that you can say, I can go out and preach the gospel. You're putting it on so that this foot says that you are now gospel and this foot says that you are now peace. Do you understand where we're going with this? You pick up that shield of faith, not just to say, listen, I'm covering this in faith. No, no you become faith. You become faith for that person. Then you don't just pick up that helmet of salvation and say this is just to cover my thoughts. No, no, no. You become thinking of nothing but of salvation through him. The the writer of Psalms goes back and says, how do you say happy birthday or thank you to him who has it all? Then he goes to these next two verses and he says, I know. You pick up the the glass, the the chalice of salvation, and you drink it all. But that salvation is a plural. So it's salvations, which is really cool. So now what you do is you take on somebody else's junk and you help them through. So now in the midst of doing it, you pick up that sword of the spirit, that word of God, and you don't will it against somebody else because everybody knows scripture and we can make it fit us. But you speak it with power and love and it transforms lives. Anything else won't do. It won't. Oh, but brother, I need my marriage to work out. If that's why you're coming to Jesus, you missed it. You missed it. It's in you being with Jesus. He'll make all that work. I'm going to declare this. So money, 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 come to me now. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. I don't, Jim, I'm sorry. I I like my name. He named me Michael. I I, I like that. This is what scares me too. I want to go back. I had to pick up my grandson on Friday from down at the at Garden Lakes. And I was sitting there. I was going through all this, and we are getting ready to see the vote and all that. I heard all these little voices. They were laughing and playing and running and jumping, and I'm thinking, yeah, that one there, just he's going to be in trouble. He's over there smacking people as he's running by. <laughs> Here the teacher is, I, I'm not going to mention this kid's name, Heard this teacher or whoever it was that was out there yelling for this one boy over and over and over. I'm thinking, it's got to be Zachary. But it wasn't. My grandboy, because I'm constantly yelling for my grandboy, Zachary, stop. Zachary, don't. Zachary, you leave him alone, he'll be climbing to the roof of this thing and belly flopping off of it. Well, in the midst of hearing all that, it saddens my heart because it went back. And as we were trying to get this war, people were trying to, to fight against this bill for passing and try to allow abortions in, in me. Now, life can only be given by God. No matter what sin it came into, whether it was rape, incest, whatever it might be, that life came by God. I mean, it's never a mistake. It's never something that, that's not wanted because it was wanted before the foundation of the world. If we do our job as Christians and stand, those abortions will stop. Not saying that there, there, there won't be births and things that'll be just just happen what i'm saying is mommies and daddies who aren't mommies and daddies that i know that want children can rise and others who want more children will rise no life can be taken that can only be god there's a a man who which which i love and most of you know uh, he was actually a, a baby that was supposed to be aborted jason upton's his name and he talks about abortion this is why he's really big against it he says, you know, had my mom followed through with this, and because he went all the way through the, to, the, to the point where they were ready to just destroy him, had my mom followed through with it, I would have never been here today. That man has led thousands and thousands to the Lord and goes all over the world leading a trumpet of worship to people for God. That's cool, isn't it? So can I say something? Those kids aren't mistakes. I think that we need to go back and fight this, as we talked about, on our knees on our hands and until we can value life now grab this until you can value life you're never going to experience the joy of salvation 
See, salvation is not about death. Salvation is about life. Jesus came to die to give us life. The enemy came to destroy life. Hence, going back to the same thing that Eve tried to grab a hold of, we got to understand that life is breathed, given to us by the Lord himself. So your name wasn't something that was just picked out of the air. Your name was actually written out, ushered by the lips of God before the foundation of the world. And every moment of your life, every hell was there, but God was there with you at it all. That's what's so powerful about it. And as I heard these little voices and was talking to the Lord about it, man, I started weeping. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't. And then I heard you say, just do this little video. And I did. I was going to do a little bit more. I started to get out of the car. And I thought, well, they'll arrest me. I better sit right here. So I did. You know, because, man, I heard him. And I thought, what if one of those little voices wasn't there to fill that, that playground? What if that little boy was aborted that that woman was yelling his name over and over? We had my grandkids this weekend. And my, my grandboy was getting on me, boy. I said, Zachary, stop. Zachary, quit. Zachary. I blew up the air mattress, you know. And little Zachary come running in. Boom, and here comes Noah. Boom. And then I'm like, get off of it. I'm trying to fix the air mattress. Boom, I get off of it. So I get it, and I'm starting to lift it up. And is there, they're still jumping on it, and I've got it in the air. I'm like, stop. I got in there to get my coffee this morning. I went in there and got my coffee this morning, and I heard the Lord say, those are gifts I've given to you. You know, abortion just doesn't happen in the physical said, I can't wait till your mom and dad gets back to get you. Gosh, I don't want to do this, Lord, please. And the Lord said, what if you didn't have him? And I was, and he took me back to that little boy that's being yelled for. We could create an emotional abortion inside of us. And we do this to the body of Christ and we don't even realize it. I don't like you. You stay over there. I don't want nothing to do with you. We've created a spiritual abortion with people who are already there. Do you get it? As I was sitting there going through this with my great with the Lord about my grandson, I come walking back. It actually was last night, and then it hit me really hard this morning. But last night we're trying to watch this movie. We got him a movie that they could watch called Orphan Horse. Anybody see it? Dude, you got to go see the movie. It's really good. Thank you, Lord, for making my composure. So we get it, and we're setting it, we're putting it in. Zachary says, I don't want to watch it. I said, you're going to watch it. He said, nah. I'm like, oh, you remind me of your mama. <laughs> and if everybody knows, it's really Michael. No, isn't it? Anyway. So I said, you're, you're going to watch it. You like this movie. No, I don't. I don't like it because it's when the mommy goes, and he remembers this one part that was really heart piercing, but it was scary. I said, you're going to watch it. No, I'm not. The other kids are going, oh, they're watching. They're going like this. And Zachary's going, I want to watch it. I want to watch it. So he's over there. He's poking, you know, with the other ones. So I get down there, and I said, Zachary, that's it. Sit there and watch it. I don't want to watch it, baby. I said, you're going to watch it. I want my mama. I said, your mama's in Atlanta. She ain't coming back tonight. He went, ooh. I'm like, yeah, I got him right now. So I get up, and I go, and I, I sit back down on the bed. I grab my computer, because they were watching a movie. I wasn't. I was doing other stuff on the computer. And I looked over that little head again, and that reminded me of that playground. So I went, and I grabbed my computer. I took it down, put the headphones in. I said, hey, dude. So I came up with a, this movie, Netflix, called G-Force, I think it is, about these little rats. Oh, no, gerbil. No, they're hamsters. Hamsters, guinea pigs. Hamsters, Okay. As soon as he saw that, though, you know what he did? I said, you want to watch that? I said, yeah, but you would want to watch about a rat. You don't want to watch a horse. That's okay. So I put it in there, and immediately he just started beaming. And I'm like, wow. This is really awesome. 
This is what God wants us to do with everyone. You got to step out of yourself to step in the now. Now the great, I, I've cast out more demons than I could possibly think of. I've watched more people be healed than I could possibly ever think of as well. And I'm glad. But the moment that I stepped out in that, in that love, ooh, there was something different. Something amazingly different. Now I know some of you are thinking, people, you're, you're thinking I'm bad, aren't you? I can see some of your faces going. It'd be all right. Believe me, there's grace, there's mercy. God's still working in me too. There's things that when we step out, because the, the, the steps of the righteous are ordered unto God, to step out to see greater things. This is putting on. This is becoming righteous. This is becoming the finished work of Christ. No matter what it is, no matter where it's at, are you shining for Jesus? See, this is a part of where he talks about in here where he wants us. Do you remember that word pro slam bano we touched last week? It really goes back. So, so just go with me real quick as I touch this. I know I'm getting close to time again. Man, I didn't even touch the shoes. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Romans chapter 15, verse 7. I need you to get this. This righteousness that we talk about, it gets sunk, it sunk, sinks down deep into us so much so that it fits us so perfectly that it carries us into a state of complete rest. This is where pro Bano really hits us. Those first words that I just talked about was in duo. That's where it sinks down in two, fits us, and carries us to a state of complete rest. That's having that breastplate put in place. This next part here is where it comes in. And he says, therefore, accept one another, just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. This word, accept. Somebody say accept. This is what you have to put down inside your heart. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from you. It should always stay with inside you, meditating on it day and night. And in this, you will provide and you will see the prosperous and successful way. Then he goes on in the next verse. He says, Be strong and courageous. Have I not told you? Be strong and courageous, for God is with you everywhere you go. That's powerful, isn't it? Then it tells us in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. Hence why that breastplate is there. It's why it's got to be in duo. Well, that word pro slambano is that word accept. This is where the powerful, powerful weapons come in against the enemy. This is the foundation because we're only accepted through Jesus Christ. And as we're accepted through Jesus, we watch what he does. He builds us up. He does. This is, this is how it comes together, this word. This word is powerful, it's forceful, it's graphic, it's descriptive, and it's got so much meaning to it. And last week, a lot of people got set free. Some of them aren't here today, but that's all right. Got set free. Today, I declare over top of you today, you're going to get set free again. Matter of fact, you're going to watch your feet get stepped up. I'm going to be a little over, but that's okay. Right? <laughs> all right, here we go. This is the word pro slam bano. It means to literally charge straight toward a person above all, riding every issue, and to forcefully take them to yourself. So how many remember Michael was sitting over here, and I had these papers last week, and I threw them in the air, because these are all the wrongs. Everything you've ever done, everything that you're going to do, the devil's written it out, and he said this to you. And he's up there, and he's making accusations against you to the Lord. And the Lord looks at, these, looks at all these. The moment that you receive Christ, the moment that that, that that spirit of adoption comes within your heart, and notice that was a spirit that changed you. It covers you. You become righteous. So he takes all those wrongs. He throws him in the air and he runs and he grabs a hold of you and says you're my child I'm never letting you go it's good isn't it some of you need to get woke in here yeah how many of you ever felt like you're alone ever felt like you just messed up like God can't use you like you think you understand where you're going but then you find out maybe you don't this is that word. This is what we grab a hold of. It's this pro slam banner. It's a picture of the father chasing you down, giving you a bear hug. He's not going to let you go. So we find that once we receive this, God knows that we're really good. He's so excited. He's so happy. He's so hyper that he wants to grab a hold of you that he'll do anything and he'll move mountains, separate seas, and he will cause the biggest flood to just go so he could get to you and not let you go. Yeah, that feels good. Because how many of us walk into a room sometime and feel rejected? How many of us walk into a room sometime and we feel insecure? Oh, something, I can't handle what's going on. Oh, my bills are getting really tight. I don't know how we're going to make this. Oh, I don't know what's good. They're, they don't like me. Did, did you see the way they looked? See how she looked like this? And he thought he was that. All of that, the enemy's trying to stop you from understanding that God has got you. If we understand that God has got us, guess what happens? The enemy can't get you. 
you you got to grab this. For where the kingdom is, which is inside you, and where it's coming about, all of that junk can't be. The enemy can't be there in the midst of the kingdom of God. He can't. You rise to a whole nother level where it pushes him away. He just can't touch you. He really can't. But God goes on. He, he wants to, to tell us about this righteousness that goes to us. He just doesn't want you to know you're right in his eyes. He wants you to feel it sunk deep into your heart where it fits you so perfectly. It carries you to a state of complete rest that you're righteous. He just doesn't want you to know that you're a son and daughter. He wants you to feel it so deep down into your heart, covering you so perfect that it carries you into a state of complete rest, that you are his son and daughter, and there's nothing you can do about it. He wants you to know how powerful, how amazing, how beautiful you are in his sight. He just doesn't want you to know it here. He wants you to feel it. Sunk deep down inside you, cover you so perfectly, it carries you to a state of complete rest. That you're amazing, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, and you're more worth anything in the world because he gave the world for you. Yeah, that's good. But yet we stop and let the world try to dictate who we are. We stop and try to do this, and, and, and I just want to give a couple of, of things as we walk through this. I don't want to go off of this because I'm out of time. So. I'm going to give you a couple examples. We find in Scripture where over and over the psalmist writes that the steps of the righteous are ordered by God, that a man could plan his way, as Proverbs says, but only God will give the power to see it through. God's not going to put you in the midst of a gate of hell or a midst of a battle if he's not already given you victory over it. Write this down. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. I'll say it one more time. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God cannot keep you. We're so afraid to do this. We're so afraid to step out. And let me tell you, if God is guiding you, because his spirit tells us, as it tells us in the, in the book of Isaiah, you'll make a step to the right and to the left, but you hear the voice to say, this is the way, walk in it. He's already preordained everything for you, but he is not going to lead you where you cannot be kept. If we believe in his saving hand, why in the world are we not believing in his keeping hand? Why? Well, Paul as we find from the book of, 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 the book of Acts, starting at actually chapter 20 through, Paul was getting ready to go sent, sent out, be sent out. And as he was, all of his friends came to him and said, you can't do this. We know the prophecies there. Do you not understand they're going to destroy you? You're going to be dead. And he stopped and he says, oh, wait a minute. He says, what are you guys trying to do? Break my heart? I am ready to not just be bound for Christ, but to die for my Lord as well. He was ready to go. And this is what he said, you're trying to stop me. But he kept going and he kept going to it got him to the other side. And that's what opened up the door of what we know, the apostle of faith today. Isn't that powerful? All because the man stepped out where other men said he shouldn't do. Let's go to another one. The way, you know, I'm going to tell you, this is where the gospel was able to be released for us Gentiles. If, besides anybody, if, if nobody's a Jew in here, you're a Gentile, just so that you know you fit that, that mark. So let's go back. There was a guy, he was a centurion. He was so desirous for the Lord. How many of you desire the Lord? Let me see your hands. Yeah, that's everybody. Are you sure? Now, I want to ask the Lord to keep an eye on these hands. Let me see your hands again. Now, Lord, you take note of every hand that's up. And every hand that's up, God, I ask that you pour out upon them like they have never seen. God, you cover them in that armor of light that will destroy the enemy by the brightness of your coming and the breath of your mouth. God, I thank you for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit with the gifts and the fruits to operate. God, I thank you that every chain that is coming against these people will be broken. Every word that was spoken against them, every petition signed to destroy them, be demolished in the name of Jesus. And by the blood, we declare that we are your righteous and we shall live and declare your works. In the name of Christ, we will encounter and we will be full of your spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, on top of this, Cornelius was so looking for the Lord. He so wanted him, Acts chapter 10. So wanted God. So did. I know it's not up on his notes, but just follow with me. 
In Acts chapter 10, is, is he, he was saying he wanted the Lord. His heart was so big that God opened up the heavens to send him an angel to come about to say, this is who you got to go get to come to. So as soon as Peter got it, now get this. Peter said, huh, I ain't going over there and being with them people. No, 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 them's unclean people. How have you ever heard that before? You're hanging with who? You're going with who? <laughs> I get this a lot. You're at that church? Wait a minute. Don't they got black walls? Don't they put the lights out? Don't they go on with worship for a while? And don't, don't they always talk about people praying over each other? Oh, we can't go there. Yeah. I, I just heard this. The delivery. Yeah. They don't like your delivery. I really don't care if you don't like my delivery. You have to you take that up with the Holy Ghost. It's that. You, you deal, deal with him and we'll see what happens. It's all in that area. He wants you to be changed because he needs that place out there to be changed. So Cornelius so desired the Lord that Peter gave, got this vision. Peter got this vision, matched it all up. Peter come on into the house. You know the first thing that happened? As soon as Cornelius saw him, he fell to his feet. Now it wasn't, it is, I think some think that he fell to worship Peter. Wasn't it at all? You know what I think he did? He was like, whoa, God, you're really real. You said this, and there he is. So his heart was opened, and as Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell. And as they fell upon them, they were saved, and his whole household was saved and baptized. Speaking in tongues, matter of fact. Now, somebody who doesn't believe in whole household salvation, you need to go back and get rid of a whole lot of Scripture because it says that when you open up that door, you're now opening up the door for your family to be saved. See, that doorway that was open, and this is what was so cool, because he said, I love how he did this. The, the Word of God, how the Holy Ghost puts that stuff in there, he's like, whoa, that's really cool. He says a door was open for him, a door that would now go to the Gentiles, all because one man's heart was desirous for the Lord, and the, the Lord fell. Now, those are the steps. Those are the steps of the righteous to take us to that next level. In your walking this week, and I, I know I'm not touching a whole lot, but in the walking this week, I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, as I put these shoes of the preparation of gospel of peace on, direct my steps. Now, I want to hit this. God wants to make sure that you are victorious in everything. He wants to make sure you're fruitful and fully pleasing, which only comes through faith, correct? But when you speak Step in these shoes that he's given you. Have you ever seen those movies, those cartoons where somebody put these magic boots or shoes on and it takes them all over the place? Anybody? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the, the, the movie, but anyway, there was a movie where this guy put these shoes on and all of a sudden, boom, it would take him all these different places. This is what happens when you put these shoes on. When you put the shoes of the preparation of gospel of peace on, you're now allowing God his will for your life to start to dictate your steps. He will put you in one place to another, and you don't even realize that it's happening. This is part of what he wants to do. This is all of it. God says that he will step in every one of our steps, every one of our ways, and be short-footed. This is why Paul was able to say this. Listen, you're trying to stop me, but I know what waits on me is what the Word of God tells me, what's, what the Holy Ghost says. Afflictions and imprisonments. Chains await me. That's all he knew. But you know what he said? Let's go. <laughs> now, if somebody told you you was going to have to go through some hell today to be able to show somebody about Jesus, would you do it? Yes, pastor, I would. Yeah, right. Yeah. When, when God puts upon our heart, maybe those shoes are, are in your giving or your shoes are in your praying or your shoes are in your studying. Your shoes are just talking to somebody. Hey, how are you today? Are you following those? That's the steps. You could accomplish everything in the world because a lot of us do, right? Nike, just do it, huh? Yeah, yeah, all those big stars and doing all that other stuff. What's going to happen when they get face-to-face -face with Jesus? Because the stature of the man and all everything that he's accomplished is now brought down to everybody on an equal playing field. <laughs> What's going to happen? What's going to happen to you? How's that going to look for you? You see, this is part of putting this armor on. This is part of putting those shoes on. So you pray over your schedule. Anybody do that? How do we do this? How do we put these on? Lord, I thank you that today is written out every one of my days. 
I've got all of these things happening from this morning until noon. God, I ask that you bless and you put me in that place, just as the scriptures were just been being flashed up there. You put me in that place that I may receive everything and give everything that needs. Lord, I thank you that you're going to start to work in the hearts of the people before I get there. Every meeting, Lord, and he will start to tell you things. Then you go into the next part of your day from noon to save the, the four or five o'clock. Lord, I thank you that as we finish this day, I'm going to be refreshed. I'm going to be excited. I thank you that your glory is going to go in front of me. That, Lord, you're going to start to reveal the hearts of man that we might be able to touch them, oh God. And he starts to do that. Then what about our evenings? Does anybody ever pray about their evenings? I do. I'm living with Kim. Yeah. Not as a bad thing. But what I do, honestly, I do. I'll be driving in a truck, getting home, or whatever I'm doing. Lord, I ask that you bless this evening. I ask that you kiss it with your glory, and you let us be able to rest in you, worshiping you. And our evenings work out really good. And when we go to sleep, or as we're laying down, as we're getting ready, I'll, I'll put my hand on, on her back. Come here, honey. When she's laying to me. She'll be laying in bed. And as she's sleeping, or she's laying there, like this. <laughs> this is what I do. I put my hand right on her back, just like that. And I just, for some reason, I just do it this way. I make sure that my, my middle finger's right on her spine and my palm. And I ask the Lord to let her sleep be restful. Speak to her at night. Give her words which she uses. I ask the Lord to protect her, to send his angels round about her, but to flower, flower her in his goodness. And then he does. Thank you. We'll get into some other stuff here later on how we pray this armor on when we're done with this series, but as we wrap it up, on how we pray it over top of each other. It's part of what we have to do, guys. Honestly, the steps are ordered. In the midst of doing that, you're going to get a prompting of the Holy Spirit that might tell you there's a meeting that's going to cancel. Or he might tell you that it's going to go well or it's not going to go well. He might tell you to take a different way to work or a different way to meet or to reach out for somebody. But you better be ready to follow that obedience. Do you remember that passage, that foundation? We're ready to what? Destroy all these strongholds, right? Take every thought captive once our obedience is, is, one more time. You have to step out in it. God, I just want you to do it. Just do it. I want to see you do it. I want to see you do it. You got to do this to get that. No, 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 no. I just want to see you do it. I don't want to have to. Reminds me of that, that Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Some of you guys probably don't even really know much about Dunkin' Donuts down here. Because anyway, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts is really cool. It really is. Anyway, there used to be this commercial. This old guy would get out and he'd be walking through these donut sheets. Time to make the donuts. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, see, some of you got it. Yep, yep, yep. That's about what it's like with some of us. God's telling you he wants you to bless. He's telling you he wants you to do things, and you're like, oh, i got to go do this. You're never going to accomplish anything, nothing. So it's time that we put these shoes on, and next week we'll see a little bit more of this. I know I went over a little bit with that, but, but I want you to get this. God has equipped your feet. He's equipped your schedule really quick, let's just touch three other things. I know I'm a little over. And I know some of you are thinking, well, that's not really prophetic. Really? Then why are you not doing it? Just saying. I was looking for the boom, shaka luka luka boom. <laughs> what well, got to your heart, didn't it? No, it didn't. I just don't know about it. That's because you ain't doing it. Try it and see what happens. It changes. It does. So let's go to talk about what we eat. We pray over what we eat. I'm learning that again. Man, since they had me on this medicine, I was eating everything. 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 And then when I wasn't eating, I was still gaining it. I was like, I lost a lot of weight. I was feeling good, working back out. Lord willing, I'll be able to go back to do that next week. And I'm sitting there, and I'm really, really hungry. And I'm not a hot dog kind of guy. When I eat a hot dog, it still runs around. So it's one of those, oh, you don't want to chain it up, you know. So I'm sitting there thinking, man, I'll even eat a hot dog right now. I'm so hungry. And I mean, I just got done eating. Yeah, it's like, what do you do, right? So in the midst of that, Lord, I ask that you help me with this. Lord, I submit my body to you, and I ask that you help to crucify this flesh to take into account that I, what I eat may give you glory. 
the exercising. Some of us don't exercise at all. Oh, I exercise, brother. I go from my car to the house and from the house to the work and back to the, the, to the coal box, well, the refrigerator for some of you, and then back to the couch and sitting down. And I flip that channel. I'm getting that, you know, I'm, I think that I'm even going to try to get SSI just because my thumb hurts so much when I'm flipping. I ain't going to touch that. Anyway, so as we... we we have to pray over that. Lord, help me to exercise that I may get this body, this vessel in tune for you, in shape. Yeah. It's part of it. And he will. He'll start to give you these things where you'll be able to do that. He honestly will. Then it goes also into our reading. Well, oh, you know, I want to read, Pastor, but every time I pick up that Bible, before you know it, I'm like, here, I'm reading. And <laughs> Anybody ever find themselves like that? What do you do? I sleep. When you get up, you got all this drool running down you, right? 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 Be honest. You wipe it off, but what you do is you pray. Lord, Lord, help me today. Nice nose. Oh. Hey, I could preach on some of this. It's one of those, Lord, help me today. Help me that when I pick this up, because I'm reading this to have a relationship with you. I want to know who you are. I want to know what's going on. Dig me in here, Lord. Let me find, here's the crazy part. I want you to get this. Let me find Jesus. And as I, because you could find Jesus in every page, you can. And when I do, let me also find myself in this. Because here's the, here's, I'll, I'm truthfully, I'll be honest with you. I think one of the reasons why people don't read the Bible, especially those that God's trying to deal with their heart, is because the Bible's reading them, and they're afraid of it. They're afraid of it. So as we pray that, watch what God does. He'll prompt you. Instead of you sitting there watching that slap stuff on TV, he'll say, shut that off and get in the Word. Instead of just sitting around and saying, oh, there ain't nothing to do. We're making ourselves busy. We do, don't we? We get so busy. We just, oh, I like to get busy here, get busy here, get busy here. I'm a busy guy, too. I love to run. I do. I love to keep going. That's just who I am. But, man, if, if I ain't getting that word in me, I'm running on empty. I'm running sideways instead of really where I need to. And I don't know about you, but every step that I take has got to be towards heaven because I've been running towards hell for a whole lot of years. And we need to make sure that our footing is secured, that we're stable. And that we could walk right. Next week we'll get into a little bit more of, of those things. But today, I want us to just declare a few other things. Can we do that? Everybody good with that? All right, so stand on your feet. Well. Now, if you guys don't have those declarations from the, the past few weeks... We've got some out there. I know there's a, been a bunch that's been out already, but we still got a bunch out there. I'll give you these ones next week, which are really, really good. Somebody say really, really good. Really, really good. All right, Miss Danielle, you guys want to come up and play? As they come up and play, we're going to, to go through this. Say this with me. I am the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. My, body is the house of God. My body is the house of God. God lives in me. Lives in I belong to him. I have been bought and bought the price. The blood of Jesus. So I glorify God in my body, in my mind, and in my spirit. I am the righteousness of God. I am established in righteousness. I am far from oppression. I do not fear. I am far from terror. It will not come near me. See, now what you're doing is you're starting to put these hedges up where these hedges will start to build all the way around where the enemy can't really come in, but it does no good and you're declaring without you declaring it from here. So in faith, you release this and understand that you can't see these things happening, but you will physically start to see things change around your life. And it's all because you're declaring God's word. Amen? So let's go on. We're going to keep going. I live, I live and, walk faith, and walk by faith, not by sight, not by, sight, not by, emotions, not by emotions, or my urgencies, or, my urgencies, or, emergencies. or emergencies. All things, All things are, working are working together for the good in my life, in my life because I love God, I love and I am called, called to His purpose. <laughs> yeah. Every day, Every day as I wait upon the Lord, he renews my strength. So I say to myself, 
rise. rise. Be, strengthened. Be strengthened. Like wings of eagles. Like wings of eagles. You, shall you shall rise above the storm. You will run and not get weary. You will walk and not get faint. I will be strong and of good courage. I will not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. Nothing good will be withheld from me. For I walk uprightly. It is God's will that I prosper and be in health. Even as my soul prospers, I serve Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. He sees ahead and makes provision for me now and in the future. Every step of obedience that he asks, I will take. Yeah, yeah. Because God's Holy Spirit lives in me, I am giving. I'm compassionate. I'm compassionate, I am merciful, I am, merciful. I am loving, I am loving. And, I am kind. and I am kind. God will continually, God will continually to, guide to guide me. The spirit of truth lives in me, and he will guide me into all that I need. He will guide me into all truth. He will show me things to come as I allow him to speak in my life. I follow after the purposes of peace with all men and all holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. I give no place to strife, because where there is strife, there is confusion. And every opportunity for every evil work, I am a child of the King. I am born again. I am born of the Spirit. I am born of the Word. I am strong. I am mighty. I am skilled in battle. Where I tread, devils flee. I am the light of the world. When my light shines, darkness is gone. I am salt of the earth. And I season this earth with every step of my foot. I declare today that I am blood bought, Holy Ghost filled, kingdom advancing, child of the king. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall hold me back. I am victorious in Jesus. I declare it from my future. All the way back to my present. All the way down to my children. All the way down to my children's children. I am an heir to the throne. I am a joint heir with Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. Everywhere I go, Jesus goes with me. I ask that heaven and earth record and decree all this today in Jesus name let it be amen amen give him some praise now as we're we're closing in this song I want to open up these altars for anybody that wants to come up and pray you want somebody to pray with you that's fine we will, I'll be over here with my wife for a bit there's people all around if you want somebody to pray just come up and somebody will come to you. So come on up. Don't sit there and leave it yourself. Don't leave here and say, man, I could have just broke through. Today is your breakthrough. Today is your day, but you're only going to get what you believe he's at doing. He's knocking at your heart. I guarantee it. I can feel it. I know it. He wants to empower you with the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let a rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no 
sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too. So lay down your head, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless, and all those who've strayed, come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary, rest that endures. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. So lay down your There's joy for the morning, oh sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens, lay are being changed, Father, by you, and we just love you so much, God, and we thank you, Father, and that what was spoken today sinks deep into each of our hearts, God, that we don't forget what was said, Father, but that it's planted deep in us, Father. Thank you that every day you're drawing us closer to you, God, closer.